Hey guys, welcome back if you are a returning loving subscriber and welcome if you're completely new. It is so great to have you here. Let's hug it out. My camera gives the best hugs. Let's... Uh, anyway. I'm a game developer, like you, I assume. And as game developers, one of the most anxiety-inducing questions that we can ask ourselves is, how much progress should I have made on my game at this point? And it's no mystery as to why we are constantly being flooded with other developers' progress and how fast they're going. So, how much progress should you have made, really? Well, I'm not gonna tell you now, it's the beginning of the video. So grab yourself a coffee or a tea if you're one of those people. There are a few key factors to consider first, so let's just get right into it. Be sure to stick around to the end, because if you do, I'm gonna be sure to drop you some tips to help you progress just a little bit faster. So my first question for you is, how do you like to work? There's literally a million ways to get anything done, and some work styles are just going to be more efficient than others. But I don't believe that there's any wrong way of actually getting your work done. So what's your style? Some people like to really try to perfect one thing at a time and then move on to the next thing. Some people like to handle their content in chunks of multiple waves and not really care about perfection in the first, second, or even third iteration. Some people like to jump around from one thing to the next, even though they might not even be remotely connected. Level design, rain particles, bug fixing, new enemy, remake some old art, add animations to your menu. <laughs> None of these styles are wrong, okay? There are pros and cons to each of these styles though, and we'll get into that a little bit more later. So what kind of project are you working on? What genre is the game that you're working on? Is it a 2D game, a 3D? Are you working in AR or VR? If you're working on a 2D puzzle game, then you really shouldn't be comparing yourself to a developer working on a first-person shooter. I've never worked on a puzzle game, but I do imagine that working on a puzzle game involves a lot of planning and a lot of different iterations before you find that sweet spot of just challenging enough, but also making it hard enough that the player feels really smart when they figure out the solution by themselves. So if that's what you're working on, you could literally work on one single puzzle all day and then scrap it at the end of the day and then literally you've made no progress on your game. Now if that was you and you saw a first person shooter devlog come out and someone's showing you all the progress that they've made on day one of their project, you're probably going to feel super discouraged. You can start a first person shooter project pretty quickly and get things up and working straight away. And then you're going to have these thoughts popping up in your head that are like, hey look, this guy got his core mechanic done on day one. What the hell is wrong with you? It's apples and oranges though. You really can't compare them. First person shooter developers have so, so many things to worry about that 2D developers just don't even have to think about, and vice versa as well. And in case I triggered any first-person shooter developers out there, I know that your genre is not easy. In fact, Thomas Brush, he, he's my future best friend, by the way, he just doesn't know it yet. He has a great video showcasing just how difficult making a first-person shooter is. If you want some validation and just a really entertaining video to watch, I'll leave a link down below in the description for his video. Okay, so different types of projects progress at different rates. I have almost been working on our game, Veil of Maya, for a full year now. A whole year. So how far have we come in one year? Well, I'll tell you one thing, it's definitely not as far as I would like. I quit my job and we actually sold our house to be able to afford to live while we get this studio up and running. But as time has gone on over the past year, we've moved away from just doing devlogs on this channel to doing devlogs and tutorials. And these you know, motivational slash game dev tips slash game dev life type of videos. And that all takes a whole lot of our time. We publish two videos a week and we have pretty high standards for our video quality. So that means that my dev time on Veil of Maya has gone from in the beginning five days a week to now just two days a week. I just can't get as much done in two days a week. So many of you are part-time developers. And so if you only have like an hour here and there to be able to work on your game, then why would you compare yourself to someone who has way more time to develop develop than you do. It's going to do nothing for you except make you feel bad about the progress that you have made. If you only have an hour a day, it's going to take you a while to make your game. That doesn't make you a bad developer. That's just realistic. Most game developers that I know and have met are completely self-taught. I've actually never met anyone that went to school for it. And when you're self-taught with something, there's no standardization. The only limit is you. The number of years of experience that you have, honestly, I don't even really think that matters all that much. Because a lazy developer that only works on what they know and is never willing to step outside of that comfort zone box, they are going to be miles behind a newer developer that just wants to absorb and learn as much as they possibly can. So it's not just about the experience that you have, it is the experience that you have and your willingness to learn new things while you are working on your project. That's going to determine how fast your project ends up coming together. 
this is a whole topic in and of itself and I might actually end up doing a whole video just to cover this topic maybe we'll see but another thing that's going to determine how quickly you're able to push your game out is what actions you are taking on a daily basis I'm not talking about sitting down at your computer to do work that's obvious if you don't sit down and code your game's not going to get done I'm talking about being in motion versus taking action motion involves things like strategizing and planning or taking courses and learning new things and actions are the things that you actually do to get your game done creating new art coding in new mechanics designing new enemies creating levels for a game developer taking action means you are developing content for your game now let me be clear on this motion and action both are necessary for your game i really don't want to spread the wrong message here you need to plan out your game and you need to strategize how you are going to market your game and you need to learn new things in order to improve along the way but i think that a lot of people can accidentally get themselves stuck in motion and when we're stuck in motion for too long we're not actually accomplishing anything meaningful in our game meaning we are taking the wrong actions i was stuck in tutorial purgatory for almost two years constantly just learning new things and doing tutorials without building anything of my own when i was new so i know better than anyone how this can end up happening to someone so it is not your fault that this happens to you this is a self-protection mechanism that your subconscious mind is going to trick you into doing if you're not paying attention if you are a game developer there is some part of you that is scared to release your game on steam or whatever platform you're wanting to publish on what if people hate it what if it flops what if it's a massive massive success and you just can't handle that kind of attention what if people say you just cloned or copied another game you know what i'm talking about you would want your game to succeed but there is some tiny tiny part of you that's really scared to release your game you are a human with a human mind and all human minds on a psychological level behave the same way when they're scared when you are scared you will suddenly start to find an amazing number of ways to avoid doing your actual work that is when motion is not your friend because in this scenario motion meaning planning strategizing or learning new things those are safe activities that feel productive to you and it can be easy to think oh i took a course today i learned some new code i had a great productive day this was a good day now that's great if your goal for that day was in fact to learn something new if your goal was to work on your game and make progress then you didn't meet that goal there is a time for motion and planning and strategizing and learning and learning not to let our subconscious fear dictate our productivity and what we work on is something that just takes a little bit of practice but mostly just being even aware of what the heck is going on in that brain of yours and distinguishing the difference between your conscious thoughts and your subconscious reactions that just pop up all on their own being able to distinguish the difference, that's going to help you tremendously. If you like the video, then please hit the like, share, subscribe, all those magic YouTube buttons. If you want to help support us, boop those buttons. We appreciate it. Now, back to the video. This is an anti-point, and it probably runs contrary to what you've been told. Your motivation levels should have zero factor with how much work you actually get done. Motivation is not a long-term solution to anything. I almost consider motivation a mood, and moods come and go. There's gonna be days where you wake up and you are excited as shit to work on your game, and there will be days where you would rather spank your own on camera for the whole world to see than work on your game. Let me put it this way. If you are waiting for motivation to work on your game, then your game is probably never gonna get done. Or at the very least, it's gonna take you a lot longer to finish than you want. You could go to a motivation seminar and get yourself all pumped up and feel like you have the energy to take on the world. But a few days after you get home from that convention, everything's gonna go back to normal and you're gonna feel exactly the same as you did before. I'm not saying that motivation is useless. It's very, very useful. And if you do feel motivated, then get your ass to work right away because you are going to work more productively when you're motivated, that's a promise. All I'm saying is that motivation is fleeting. It comes and goes. You don't need motivation to get your game done. What you need are the right habits and habits are something that you can consciously form. You can break bad ones, you can create new good ones and you can craft them in such a way that it's going to help you get your game done faster. So how much progress should you have made in your game by now? Your game has progressed exactly as far as it should have. No more and no less. Unless you are a triple A studio that pumps out the exact same game year after year just with new coats of paint, then literally no one has the answer. No one knows how long it's going to take you to make your game. You are a unique developer with a unique set of skills, experience, habits, and you are working on your own unique game. Comparing yourself to other developers Developers, it is never ever ever going to make you feel good about yourself. It's a waste of your energy and it's going to cause you stress for no good reason. I hope that this video
video helps you see that, even if it just helps you a little bit. I truly, truly believe that we can sometimes be our own biggest obstacle to doing the things that we want to do in life. And you can't help it when you compare yourself to others. That's a really human thing to do, and it's ingrained in you very, very deeply. But when that dick voice that makes you feel like you are never doing enough chimes in and says, look at that guy over there. Look how fast he's getting his game done. What the hell's wrong with you? When that happens, just remember that you are doing your best work. You're doing the best that you can. How are you supposed to do better than your best? Now, with that being said, we all want to progress a little bit faster with our games. So I'm going to share some tips that have helped me. When you are working, when you are trying to make content for your game, ignore your phone and your Discord and all those other things. Turn them off if you have to. You cannot do your best work while you're being distracted at the same time. I read that your mind can linger on previous tasks you've been doing for up to 20 minutes before it returns to full concentration. If you are constantly going back and forth between looking at your phone and doing your work, you are never ever operating at 100% efficiency. Multitasking is not a real thing in the way that you think it is brain dump issues with your game. I use Trello as a to-do list, but I also use it as just a place to dump literally anything that I want to change, any problems that I find, I just dump it all in there. You don't have to fix a bug as soon as you discover it, especially if you're in a really good flow with whatever it is that you're working on. So write it down somewhere so that you don't forget, but now you don't need to worry about it. It's out there. You know you're going to take care of it. It honestly really helps me keep my stress levels down. On days where you might be having a lot of trouble forcing yourself to go to your computer and sit down and work, then try to force yourself to only work for 60 seconds. Turn on your PC, open your game engine, and then start the clock. Work with all your energy and focus as much as you can for that 60 seconds. You can make yourself do anything for a minute, but if you force yourself to do this for one minute, you're probably not going to mind continuing to work for longer. When I'm on my couch watching TV, the thought of going down to my office to work on my game sounds like the worst worst thing in the world sometimes. But once I'm downstairs and my computer is open in front of me and I'm already working, my brain just kind of switches gears and the worst part is already behind me. Try the Pomodoro technique. What that means is 25 minutes of work, five minute break, no distractions. You can Google it for a full better explanation, but it's based on sound scientific research and it has proven to help people work more efficiently. Figure out how to make working easy and attractive. I actually have a chest filled with chocolate bars in my office over here. I get to eat one every time I finish one of my Unity tutorial videos. It's a really little thing, but it does help add just a little bit of excitement to really making myself pump those videos out once per week. And Nikki does the same thing after she finishes editing these videos. That's just one little thing. What about your workspace? Do you have an office? Is it messy? Will keeping it clean and organized make it more attractive for you to actually go down there? Do you work at your dining? room table and there's kids running around screaming, <laughs> maybe you can find a quieter place to do your work if that's the case. Keep a to-do list by your computer and work on only those things until you complete them, then move on to other things. This will ensure that you have action items on your list that are going to get done that day. Strive for progress over perfection. The more progress you make, the better you are going to feel, even if it's not perfect progress. It helps me to consider every single thing that I add into the game, every enemy, every level, every new mechanic, whatever it is, I consider it a rough draft the first time I do it. You'll change it later and you'll make it look nicer later, but you gotta get the rough draft done first. And now I wanna hear from you guys. Did I miss anything? Do you have any tips or any productivity hacks that you can share that really help you? Do you also struggle with feeling like you're not making enough progress with your game? Did this video help you. I really love hearing from you guys, so be sure to drop a comment down below in the description. Bye. I don't get a chocolate bar for recording a video, but I do give myself one of these because being in front of the camera makes me uncomfortable. So I'm going to go ahead and have my treat now. This is my breakfast. I haven't eaten anything yet today. Cheers.